marketing does lead to sales. For dad, it was easy when I was doing a lot of weird marketing because he could see the sales. But when you're Pepsi and you're not actually selling it, it gets a little harder. These CMOs are sitting in monster global businesses. Something you do in America might show up on YouTube and it sells it out in India. You can't just see it so easy. Remember, Pepsi, Evian, uh, Reebok. It's you have being, to go to Albertsons. Yeah, yeah, you're going to Albertsons, you're going to Costco. And by the way, Costco and Albertsons doesn't want to show the brands all the information because that's how they make money, right? So there's a lot going on here that I know a lot of people listening at home don't have views into that's very interesting. Everybody, we're back. Super excited about this podcast. This uh, week-long uh, Can 2023, Can Lions. Bunch of fun guests talking about a lot of different genres. I'm really excited about this next guest. Uh, we've run in similar circles for a long time. Have a lot of admiration for her. Um, and uh, I think we're gonna have a really fun discussion. So I'll let her introduce herself. Um, but I think a lot of you are gonna get a ton of value out of Jenny and we'll talk a little bit of video and marketing and the industry. And So this one is gonna segue into a lot of good talk for marketers. I know a lot of you are aspiring to get into this industry and I know a lot of you are CMOs, brand managers and things of that nature. So excited for this. Jenny, how are you? I'm very well. Thank you. How are you, Gary? I'm well. Tell everybody who you are and what you do. Uh, I am Jenny Wall. I am CMO of uh, VideoAmp. I've only been in the job for about four months now. New. New, very new, but drinking from the fire hose for sure. Uh, I've spent the last 30 years on the brand side of the business, mostly entertainment. So this is a, a, a change for me. And uh, I hear I heard some advice recently that said, you know, in your 20s, uh, you're all about fear. And in your 30s, it's all about ego. And then in your 40s, you know, it's all you're starting to understand figure both sides and figure it out. <laughs> and in your 50s, it's all about joy. Um, and I think it's so odd that I find joy in ad tech. But I, that's, I definitely want to talk about my background, but also just as an a aging marketer as to <laughs> what the n last chapters and the next chapters are. Good world. for you, you know it's funny, I don't know if you know this Jenny about my content, but like I'm really weird about the age thing. I, the world has done a nice job of putting up a lot of issues around gender and race and sexuality, yeah. but I really do think ageism is a thing. Like the thought of even how you said that, like, like, like when I think 50, I'm like, Half time. I know you're 47. I can I'm tell you, you, you you say that a lot too. So and I, I do. I'm 53. Thank you. So so to me, I'm like shit. Like I want to die at my desk. I'm hoping you know the way modern health works. I'm like you know I'll be working at 92, 93. Like that's very real to me. The, I got lucky that I grew up with technology, so it'll be very easy for me to like be virtual or in the metaverse. But I think your point is important, which is the industry currently for a lot of the CMOS that are listening. There, there's chapters to the game. First, let's t tell everybody what video amp is. Okay, well, I'll tell you why I joined, and then that can I think be you helpful. Can do any, yeah, yeah, do it anyway. Be helpful want. as to, to what it actually is. Okay. Um, so, as a CMO and, and just in marketing, probably my biggest challenge was uh, never having enough information uh, to be able to justify the media spend. Um, so, constantly, a CFO is asking, you know, what 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 did you get for that dollar that you put in? Um, and a lot of times, CMOs are like, I I don't know. Um, and because you have an MMM model, which is a, a marketing mix model or media mix model, or you have an MTA, which is a multi-touch attribution model, just trying to figure out if I ran a TV ad and I ran a display ad and then I ran, you know, a podcast ad, uh, <laughs> on Gary's show, <laughs> like, did somebody actually buy us. something? Um, and what I think the biggest problem as a marketer is a lot of people when they get to the C level as well are fearful for their job. And so it's out it's of a nice job. fear. It's a nice job, but it's a scary job yeah. because you're seen as a cost center. And one of my goals is always to, sh to prove that we're a revenue center. Which, which for, to jump in for everyone who's listening, like marketing does lead to sales, but understand for a lot of people at home, and my father's actually sitting in here, uh, for dad it was easy when I was doing a lot of weird marketing because he could see the sales. But when you're Pepsi and you're not actually selling it, it gets a little harder, it's trailing. And when you're Pepsi and not a one store liquor store, you got a million things going on in a million different places. So for everybody listening at home with your small businesses, if you're not understanding, you're like, what, I don't get it. You don't get is that these CMOs are sitting in monster global businesses, something you do in America, might show up on YouTube and it sells it out in India. You can't just see it so easy. Right. A lot of people, you know, easier for QSRs, right? McDonald's is a little bit easier. They got the store. Remember, Pepsi, Evian, uh, Reebok. It's you have being to go to Albertsons. Yeah, and, you're yeah. going to Albertsons. You're going to Costco. And by the way, Costco and Albertsons doesn't want to show the brands all the information because that's how they make money. 
Yeah. Right? So there's a lot going on here that I know a lot of people listening at home don't have views into that's very interesting. So a lot of these reports had to be built to help people get yeah. educated. And I can actually even talk about that one once, but I'll, I'll, I'll get to further explaining what it is. So basically that was my biggest uh, uh, complaint uh, was that number one is I didn't have the right tools um, and my CFO was constantly like, oh, I'm going to take the money away then if you can't show me how it's done uh, or what it, what it's done for us. Um, and then the other thing is that our, our industry has been built on a legacy, Nielsen as a legacy um, a currency, if you will, of how we value media. What? Justification. Yeah. And the it's, Nielsen it's, rating is this. So basically what we do is we are, one, a measurement company that we have a one-stop shop basically that you can use us for measurement, for optimization, and but ingest a lot of data so you guys don't have to and also give you insights on how you should be spending your money and where you should move it. And it's outcome-based. And so marketers can go back and say, hey, it worked. Give me more money. So let's waste less money. We don't want to cut dollars. Take us behind the curtain. Yeah. Because I think a lot of a lot of brand managers and young marketers listen to this podcast, um, especially probably this episode specifically. Once they see the title, two questions on what you just said because I love that. One, what do you? And this is a subjective call. You've been in the game and you have a lot of relationships. A percentage, a way to articulate what I'm asking you: How good or bad is the CMO CFO relationship across the Fortune 500s? I don't Obviously, think it, everyone's I different. I don't think it's great, and I think that's another one of my mm -hmm. missions is to help. You know, we, we were joking about what uh, what is a, a video of headline in five years, and one is I said I want to increase the the uh, tenure of a CMO from an average of forty four months to a hundred months. Yes. <laughs> like like I want to help them stay in their jobs longer, and then I want to make the hope the the CFO and the CMO best friends because they're at odds right now. One's controlling the dollars and one's saying, I gotta spend the dollars. You gotta spend the dollars and you're not gonna take the dollars away from me, but someone's saying, I don't know if it's working, so I'm gonna give it somewhere else because I see you as a cost center. So you're gonna cut people and then you're gonna cut marketing. And then that actually, they don't see how, that actually hurts the brand down the line. So I think if we can make the CFO and the CMO best friends, meaning that, we make them un help them understand, and I think that's the biggest problem. Is you know we're, we're talking everything's going big data next year. Nielsen's even doing Nielsen one, so everything's <laughs> changed. But when I talk to Go CMOs, figure. I'll say, "Do you know that that everything's changing? We're on a forty million households. Would you want forty thousand or do you want forty million? Like I think we want forty million households because if five people go on vacation, you're also <laughs> not getting sur the survey stuff is insane. Yeah, it's crazy. So, but hey, but did you? Oh my god, I don't fucking know. Someone goes on vacation, it skews your whole data. It's so er, so Nielsen knows this already, um, and so they're doing that. So I, I'm trying to help with CMOs to say, it is changing, the world is crumbling um, around, and there's a lot of different you know partners out there that are vying for currency, number one, to be the currency that you trade on, but also to be uh, help people measure their dollars be better. Of course. And so I say to CMOs, like, listen, you don't have to go with me. I, I'm just like Just saying, go with something. Just go with something. By the way, I say that all the time. If you don't test something, first of all, you have no negotiating power None. next year. But like test our data against, you know, our competitors' data against an, our, our other and when, competitors and when you against say, Nielsen. Yeah, when you say test our data. Yeah. The thing that drove me crazy when I first got into the industry was the reports looked good, but the business was down. Right. That made no sense. Like I'm just Zero a sense. I'm just a well, very simple boy. It's because they're looking at the wrong KPIs. No they'll they'll shit. say like, "Hey, my report on co cost per engagement is incredible." Real quick before I lose you, because I think you're an inspiration for a lot of people without you even realizing this. You've had real CMO jobs and real you have, you've had real marketing jobs in your career. What's a good piece of advice for the young? Let me go completely the other way. Now we have a whole group of 16 to 30 year olds who are maybe either thinking about what they want to do for a living or are now 26, 27, 28 and have heard me enough in my content realizing they're allowed to change industries even though they don't have yeah, a degree. I, I, I do have to tell you, please. my, my nephew is, literally I was at home in Iowa and they were like, you know Gary V? I'm <laughs> telling you, you are with the, like they're 17 and 18 and like in college and they're looking for marketing jobs as well. So I just want to say thank send you. Send them for, to me for internships. I will send them. Boys, you're good. Boys, yeah. you said nephews. Yeah, boys, boys good news. VaynerMedia internship done. Jenny, you want to talk. Yeah. So uh, my, my how do people advice. get in the game? How do people get in the game in, I, I, in unique ways or if they get it, or if you think you can answer that, but if you've got a different, like a different thing that you can bring a value with, how about the people that are actually in the game right now? How do they accelerate? Which actually you probably have a, even a strong getting in the game changes by the second. How about marketers that are in the game? How do they 
what do they need to do to actually start to elevate their career <laughs> to like actually move up the ranks, which you've successfully done. You've they need it. to learn, they need to understand what they don't know. I know we sometimes say we don't know what we don't know. And so for example, when I went to Netflix, I thought I knew what I was doing in 2012. I was like, I've been marketing TV and film for 20 years. Yeah. And I get there and I'm like, oh shit, it's I have no game. idea what yeah. I'm doing. So data, so I think leaning into that and then I just, instead of running away, I grabbed every engineer and said, explain this to me. Um, the I went humility into to ask a question. Humility to say, I don't know what yeah. I'm doing. Yeah. Um, and then just keep putting yourself in those jobs. I took, I took the Gimlet CMO oh, podcast I job after it. I left Hulu. Yeah. And one of the reasons I took it was because I don't know the ear. I said, I know the eye. And why is the eye so much more valuable than the ear? So I, and then I'm now I'm doing ad tech and it's something that I, because I truly believe I want to cut waste in advertising. So I would say just don't be afraid to try what you don't. In fact, you have to try what you don't know. Um, how much waste do you think, you know, we're talking a lot about 40%. media. That's media. Talk to me how much waste do you think happens in creative? I would, I would say at least 50% of waste. And I think that's another thing is that if we can make less and also understand that premium video is not premium to everyone, things on TikTok or things that are cheap to make actually are much more valuable to some of those. And so not categorizing content that way. The production value exactly. doesn't equal quality. Quality, right. If somebody watches a video they liked. Right. And the amount of content actually consumed in social is absurd. Absurd. It's absurd. And, 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 uh, and the amount of outcomes that come from people um, engaging with those brands because they actually, they have an affinity for Jenny, them. Jenny, as you know, you and I are in can and all we've talked about is yesterday and tomorrow. All we're doing is subjectively still talking about TV commercials and talking about AI. The amount of people talking about social media creative video in this town this week is almost non-existent and that is actually what's happening today. Yes. It below, this industry's capacity for obsessing about yesterday and tomorrow without recognizing well, 50 today. years ago too. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, and I talk even- Why you, does that happen? I don't know, You, it's, it's fear. I think you, it's yeah, fear. It is fear. It's easy, no one ever gets fired for, like they say no one ever gets fired, but I think actually they do get fired now. You and if, I, by the way, <laughs> what, I'm gonna let her, fit, like what Jenny was about to say was nobody gets fired for television, and my argument is everyone is getting fired for television because it's not driving the right. results, and that's why CMOs are not staying in exactly, their jobs Exactly, because they think that's what somebody wants and they're not gonna get fired, and they're actually doing a disservice, and they're not also testing and learning. I would say mm -hmm. another thing, take at least 20% of your budget and just try new things, try new things, try new things, and if you're putting it all behind, like, you know, the thing that, that worked yeah. yesterday, you're this never gonna This is how we learn. got here, yeah. tried and true. Yeah, so guess what, you can be 20% better, so it's Love like, it. just test and learn. Don't be afraid. Also, just that I, I waited too long to speak up about my own passions. Um, and I started my own agency when I left HBO. It was a gay and lesbian agency. But since then, I've really have figured out what my passions were. And I didn't speak up as a woman also until later in life. Yeah. And now I'm like, don't apologize. Good for you. <laughs> you know, don't say I'm sorry, women out there. And ask for what you're worth. That's my other piece. Ask for what you're worth 100%. because you deserve it. Good for you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Gary. Always a pleasure. <laughs>